All right, so uh, those of you that have followed my progress uh, with the Jeep, I uh, know that at one point I have uh, installed the platform over here. And one of my focus points was to uh, make it very easily removable. And all I have to say to that is I am thrilled. Um, addition of two by fours, which I've adhered Velcro from last time, uh, made it super easy. Um, basically it takes me like seconds to remove the tables out of here so that I could go and slide into my business. So uh, for the longest time ever, I've had um, my electrical ports and this is the uh, adhesive residue. I'll clean this up eventually. Um, from the duct tape covering the ports. So uh, none of this was connected um, for a very long time. I have meant to install the uh, turn off switch and I just never get around to it. So now is a good time for me to actually get to it. Oh, and um, I don't know if I showed this or not. Um, uh, I did mention it in a couple of videos. Um, on my motorhome, which is right there, I have a TST tire monitoring system. And so I did mention that I ordered a second one and uh, I did, and it's going smack in the middle of over there. Um, but uh, so that whole thing comes with this. Okay, so this is the extender for um, the trailer. And so what better place to put it, but on the back of the truck, still connected to the 12 volt. I don't have to finagle with it. Uh, in the future, if I want to move it, I might actually relocate it on the actual trailer itself. But for the time being, it's just easier for me to keep it here. So it's nicely and tucked away. And this is actually the reason why I've gone through the project. Because as your needs explode uh, over time, uh, then you have to open everything all over again. And then you have to uh, figure out how to... Like, th this is just so much easier when you have your negative and positive right in the open and you just connect anything that you need. So function over form. But I did tidy up the uh, cables a little bit. So, but um, onto this mess over here. So um, we have, uh, maybe I should have closed this. Let me see. I could do this without pinching my fingers in process. There we go. Um, all right. Had to close the uh, the window there for a minute. So uh, basically, you have positives and negatives. So one leg goes. I guess it didn't do much of a difference. It's still shining in the uh, camera. But so one positive and negative goes here. The other positive and negative goes there. Right. And so this positive and negative are coming off the battery. And so my goal is to install this uh, turn off switch. Uh, this space is not being used for anything. So this is just perfect. So um, the way I envision is screwing this in. Uh, there is, by the way, obviously if you make a bed liner or put a bed liner in. Like this is the plastic sliding bed liner. This is not a roll on liner. So this here is made by, as you see, a rugged liner. Um, so make sure before you start drilling that you don't end up drilling into your bed, that there's actually slack uh, behind it so that you screw into this instead of the actual metal. And so uh, I'm gonna install the switch right over here and tie that into the positive and then obviously connect the negative as well. So uh, doing so will actually make this and the corresponding outlet on the other side uh, live. And I have been kicking around the idea of installing inverter over here or taking an extension cord and making an outlet over here and plugging the extension cord into the um, 
uh, what you might call it, into the uh, outlet there. But uh, the wattage and the amperage on that outlet doesn't quite impress me much. So I think it's entirely possible that I'm just gonna go ahead and put the inverter in here. Well, um, I will be the first person to admit that I'm not particularly happy with how it looks, but um, it is working. It does exactly what it needs to do. So uh, this is kind of sort of out of the way, um, off the ground and off the uh, kind of like tucked in that little corner. So um, I have been looking for a cover for all of these and I haven't and that's kind of the reason why I've been using uh, duct tape all this time. So um, theoretically speaking, the second I flip the switch, uh, all outlets should go live. Um, so we'll just have to see. One of the benefits of this is um, I have been theorizing of taking my air pump, uh, air compressor, um, and hooking it up, obviously not there, um, potentially like here-ish somewhere that I could at least clamp onto the posts. Um, I'll have to experiment with that because it is, uh, that, that air pump is extremely power hungry. I think it's rated for 130 amps or something. So uh, this wire, well, that wire is rated for 40 amps, so that's not gonna go. Uh, this, in a theoretical sense, is rated up to 300 amps in terms of amperage, but I really, uh, yeah. Nevertheless, um, it's not on my priority list, worst came, scenario you know i could always pop the hood and inflate my tires that way in fact that's actually the method that i prefer so but this uh needs somewhat of a cover i still need to uh hook up a voltage meter to all of this to make sure that i'm actually getting power um, but this is kind of sort of it all right so i wanted to provide uh some context to what i was talking about earlier so as you know, I've installed the uh, 67 design and vector off-road uh, rail and the mountain solutions and everything. So the TST tire monitoring system, uh, this is the business end of it. Uh, extremely invaluable tool. Uh, if you tow anything, and I mean anything, this is a must have. Uh, this is heavily in use in the uh, trucker trailer industry just about every trucker has some variation of this uh rvs if you don't like if you have a motorhome travel trailer or any kind of other trailer or drivable anything this is just it will save you in the long run um it's worth every single penny and those of you that have followed me on my trip to utah and colorado know exactly how invaluable this tool is because i was vlogging live having all sorts of tire issues and this prevented me from a major catastrophe so many times so a couple of other things um i don't know if i showed this before uh on my trip to utah i had um this garmin gps uh, actually mounted to my steering wheel on uh toyota tacoma and naturally that's not the most efficient way of doing it so um, in this particular case, this is actually mounted uh, through the system uh, up here, out of the way. Um, so it doesn't obstruct view or anything like that. So this is really cool. Um, I like it right where it is. Um, and so uh, on the other end, I have Garmin and both of them are made by Garmin. So this was Garmin InReach Mini 2. Um, this is a, a personal uh, satellite communicator and a locating beacon. Um, so, okay, so you might wonder why do I have this? And this, so this is basically both GPSs. Um, 
at the time when I made a decision to go to Utah and um, Colorado, it wasn't in my budget to purchase a Garmin InReach Mini. Uh, at the time it was Model 1. So my only option at the time was purchasing a GPS map 66i, I believe it was. And just the selling point was astronomical. Uh, I couldn't justify it uh, in retrospect. I probably should have because the sum of this plus that is what I would have paid for a uh, Mini. Uh, my advice to you uh, for 66i, uh, my advice to you is if you're buying, you know, either this or newer version of this, which is 66i, I stands for inReach. Um, just go with the best uh, and, and just, yes, it's expensive, but bear with me. Now, I should mention, I don't mind that this here uh, doesn't have inReach technology. I would like it to have, but again, I had a choice. I could sell this, like on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, and then put money together and buy you know, in reach device available in 66i and I pressed it out and it was like, Neh, you know, uh, it, it would have come out about the same. So the benefit of this is that if this breaks, I still have this. Um, and I actually prefer to keep it separated uh, because I know I have a double redundancy system not just for GPS, but also for communication. So in, in this, uh, the battery on it is absolutely insane. You could turn it off, keep it off, and turn it back on in like a year, and it will turn on. So um, there's that. Uh, there were some other things that were... Oh, by the way, um, this is not going to be used for off-roading, so... Um, in an off-roading situation, this comes off. So I get, you know, obviously increased vision. This is only uh, to be used for towing. So uh, normally, like the day I daily drive, there's nothing in here except for my phone that's stuck in there. All right. Now, uh, let me show you what I did here. I managed to rearrange all of my recovery gear all over again. And actually, this time around, I've um, added additional components. So I have kinetic rope, and this kinetic rope is actually much stronger uh, than what this Jeep really needs. But the only reason why I got a stronger one is because of my motorhome. Um, several years back, not this motorhome, the one before it got religiously stuck up to its belly over there and so it took several uh, tow trucks to get it out of there so at this point i have a mini shovel i have a whole bunch of uh, d shackles i have a whole bunch of um straps uh i have uh which mccombs uh pulleys and uh soft shackles so this thing is like loaded from a to z um in in terms of recovery between this and the boards that are located over there um i am fully set as one could possibly be um so th this is really cool I, I like how things are um, this space is to be used only for recovery gear all right now over here I've done a little tweak. Um, technically, I don't need this. This is the tire deflator, uh, given the fact that I upgraded, but this is what I went to uh, uh, mow up with. So I have jumper cables and also a tire deflator as a spare one. 